over 50 years ago when James Connolly brought Belfast girl workers out on strike. Singing at work was punished by the sack. Today, in this Irish factory, the management welcomes singing as evidence of high morale. This difference in attitude says a lot about the changing nature of industry and about the new status of women who work. In the last 40 years, the number of women at work hasn't changed much, around 26% of the total Irish labour force. But this figure is slightly misleading because at the beginning of this century, most women were self-employed in genteel occupations such as dressmakers or governesses. Nowadays, most women at work are employees, and as employees, their number has risen by 50,000. Not only has their status changed, but there's been a dramatic change too in the kind of jobs they take. The number of women working on the land has dropped by 89,000, and as every middle-class housewife knows, the number of women prepared to go into domestic service has steadily dwindled. It's down by 53,000 since 1926. The jobs that now attract women are in factories and offices. 41% of Irish working women are in factories, and 37% of them work in office jobs. And in spite of the large number of women who already work at machines, the demand for them is still rising. The Drogheda report forecasts a serious shortage of skilled and semi-skilled women by 1970. We have a big problem recruiting girls. Uh, three main reasons, probably. Uh, one is the big turnover in girls in the factory. We lose 12.5% per annum. Uh, secondly, the fact that girls won't come back for long periods after they're married. We can't entice them to do this. And thirdly, other factories coming into town, employing large female staff, uh, has encroached on our uh, situation here to such an extent that we have set an experiment now to employ, I think, six boys we started today to take girls' jobs.